Hey YouTube, John here, back for another video. I just want to say this is day after Mother's Day, so all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Um, my mother well, and my wife, who was the mother of my children, had a great day uh, yesterday and the day before. So this is the first video of a uh, just a little series of videos where I'm going to talk about what guitar to buy, construction of a guitar. Today I'm going to talk about electric guitars. And then I'm going to talk about the next video, construction of electric guitars. And then the next video will probably be acoustic guitars. And then, of course, the acoustic guitars might be a dual construction and talking about the guitar because it's really hard not to talk about acoustic without talking about the construction of the guitar. But anyways, so here's five things that I think if you're a beginner, intermediate, or even an advanced guitar player, things you should know or things to look for when buying a guitar first one and this is probably going to determine everything of a guitar is know what music you want to play if you're looking to play punk if you're looking to play metal if you're looking to play country if you're looking to play classic rock know what kind of music you want to play you know all these different guitars are going to have a different feel to them and they're all going to give you um a difference in tone so that's the first thing Second thing is buy buy used guitar. There's nothing wrong with buying a secondhand guitar. I feel like I watch so many videos on YouTube where you know people go out and they, they buy a new guitar and or they like brand new guitar and, and you know it's like why don't, why don't you buy it used? Because sometimes used is a better cost. Now I used to work at, at Daddy Shrunky Music, which was a um guitar store up in the New England area and we stretched uh, they, they they I should say they stretched out a little outside the New England area and fortunately the guitar the company went under and they were a great company they had um mom and shop you know mom and pop shop feel um say that 10 times fast uh, mom and pop shop feel with um competitive prices like a, a musician's friend or a guitar center you know so it was great it was a great company um but buy second hand. I mean, you, you save a ton of money, especially if you're a beginner or if you're an intermediate. I mean, um, I mean, for a beginner guitar, I mean, a lot of times the, the money is not too, too much different. I mean, you're maybe $170 guitar might be the $100 guitar you used. So that's still $70 saved, especially if you're a beginner guitar player. But especially if you're an intermediate guitar player, and, and actually that's, this guitar I bought second hand. Now, these guitars brand new, are roughly around 750 if I remember right, um, brand new. This is the uh, Gibson Les Paul Junior Special. This The reason why they call it Junior Special is because the Junior obviously is the one P90, but this has dual P90, so it's that's where the Junior Special comes from. But anyways, so these guitars are roughly, like I said, about... 750 new if i was to buy this new and let's say down the road i decide to trade it in for a different guitar now trading selling they mean the same thing in the guitar world so if i wanted to trade this guitar let's say and i bought it for 750 dollars new which i didn't but i want to buy it for 750 dollars new these guitars normally go for used anywhere between on a good day 450 you know to six hundred dollars you know what i mean so let's just take 500 just to kind of you know it's an easy easy marker so if i bought this new for 750 there the store is going to mark it at you know the 500 hundred dollar mark and they're only going to give you roughly half of what they're going to they're going to basically tag it at so you're only going to get about 250 dollars roughly for it i mean give or take if you're really nice with the guys be like oh you know can you can you give me an extra 20 bucks or something they, they, they'll try to work with you as best they can you know what i mean if you're, as long as you're cool with the people and you go in understanding that you're not going to get nearly what you paid for the guitar then they're usually pretty cool with you so if i bought this used which i did they're about 500 dollars used now if i just Let's say I decide to go trade it. Now it's the same 250. Well, I know 250 to $100 is still a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's like, oh, let's just dump that out. But 
$250 versus $500 is a fair amount of difference. You know, losing, you know, going from 750 to 250 or going from 500 to 250, really big difference, okay? But buying a used guitar, I mean, if you're getting into a little less expensive guitars, you know, if you got a guitar that's $400 used, I mean, if you decide to trade it or sell it, they may give you two to two fifty or you know it's four hundred dollars actually it's four hundred dollars new i'm sorry they might sell it used for around 250 ish you know you could be looking at 175 that's not as drastic of a difference so the more expensive guitar of course the more the price drops you know as when it goes to used and the less you're going to get for it so that's my next thing is is like i said buy second hand nothing wrong with it the third thing I want to talk about is construction. Now, the next video I'm going to go in further, further depth, but this one I just want to give you just a general idea of construction. Now, there's set neck, which the neck is set into the body. So there, you know, it's glued in and basically it's, it's such a tight fit that there's no way of screwing it up. And then there's also a bolt on. So I have a Squire Telecaster here that has a bolt-on neck. Let's see if we can get it. There it is. There's the angle. So tell it's bolted on and it's separated. Now, technically, bolt-on construction isn't cheaper as far as material-wise. It's, um, it's more labor. A lot of cost in guitar... A lot of it is labor costs. Um, you could build a, you know, I understand there's difference in wood. That I'm going to get into that the next video. I don't want to make that an argument here. And um, if you feel like you want to make an argument down below, go ahead. But right now, I'm, I'm not making that argument. Majority of the time, it is a lot of labor cost. And um, I'll get into that in the, like I said, the next video. So, but... Also with construction, what I want to talk about is the pickups, the pickup features. So, you know, Telecaster or Stratocaster or something that's going to come with single coils, which typically are a little brighter sounding, they're a little twangier sounding. Um, I don't want to say thinner because I've heard some single coils that will outdo humbuckers, but they're different sounding. They're very open sounding. They're not as compressed sounding. Um, not that the compression is bad um but they're very open sounding um so something like this i would say would be great for your your country guys your classic rock guys even some of your blues guys you know not saying you can't play metal with this guitar not saying you can't play punk with this guitar i mean probably punk would be great with this guitar too but you know if if you're looking at certain styles of, of playing music you know which goes back to the first tip you know, know, you know what style you want to play. You want to play country? You probably want to look at a Telecaster. So, the next guitar I have for you, I'm just going to place this down, is the, is what I had before, my Gibson, Gibson Les Paul. Now, this has P90s in it. Now, P90s are technically a single coil pickup. Now, these could do metal. Um, one of the guitar players in Neurosis, um, he just switched over to P90s and he's like, they're more open sounding. They, they still have a growl to them, which is really cool. But these guitars sound great for grungy type music or, or, or punk type music, blues, classic rock. I love playing ACDC style music or, I mean, even look at Black Sabbath. I mean, Tony Iommi for years and years used, used P90s. I mean, P90s are very underrated pickup i don't know why more companies don't make a guitar with p90s uh, you know they're they're a great pickup now the last pickup choice i'm not i okay i shouldn't say the last pickup choice i should say these three pickup choices are are your primary pickup choices when you go into a guitar store so the last of the three that i have here that would be also your primary, like I said, your primary choices when you go to a store, um, would be, of course, a humbucker. So a humbucker equipped guitar. Humbucker, as we talked about in my last video, when we talked about the construction of pickups, 
Um, there's two coils underneath these pick underneath here. Um, and basically they, they give a little bit crunchier sound. They're a little bit fatter of a sound. They're a little bit, you know, you want to do all the chuggy stuff or, you know, anything like that. Usually humbucker works out better for it. Sometimes, you know, more of your metal hard rock players. Um, I play a lot of hardcore metal. So usually humbuckers are my first choice. Um. But it's all relative. Now, the fourth topic is probably the, the is going to be the longest topic. Now, plugging in. And what I mean by that is is that I have had friends who they don't care how it sounds plugged in, and that's fine. Not everybody has a different way of playing guitar and you pick it up you just strum a few chords that okay plays good well then i can change up the pickups or whatever but i'm telling you right now plug it in and don't just plug it into like a line six or a digital amp like a, a, a pv viper not that those amps don't sound good that's not in any way bashing on those companies or those those amps what i mean by that is is that when you get into digital amps sometimes digital amps they um they 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 compress your tone and they kind of general, they give you like a, a very general tone. And I've played it where I played a few different styles of guitars into one, say like line six or, or one, you know, digital modeling amp. And they all pretty much sound very similar coming out of the amp. So there's not really a way to tell the difference, especially if you're trying to play, you know, a Telecaster versus a Telecaster or, or a humbucker versus a humbucker. And you plug into one of those, they're going to sound very similar. So, Plug into an actual analog style amp, maybe something like a, a, a Orange Crush. Um, those are very good solid state amps. I mean, there's a lot of solid state guitar players over the years who who've played solid state amps, and they they've people love their tone and chase after it, and they've played solid state amps. Perfect example, time back, Daryl Pantera. He's notorious for using solid state amps. Um, or, but, or if you can plug into a, a tube slash valve amp, um, depending on where you're, what, where part of the world you're from, you might either call it a tube amp or a valve amp. Um, that, that would be, I think, in my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, the best way to hear the difference between, you know, two different guitars. Now, the reason why I bring this plugging in up is because years ago, and I know this now, but years ago, back in 2011, I was buying a Gibson Les Paul Classic Custom Gold Top. And that was a great guitar. I had to get rid of it for some construction uh, construction issues of the guitar, not because I didn't like the guitar. But I was nice I was nice to the to the guy who knew me. He knew I was really interested in this guitar. I mean it was a two thousand dollar guitar and he basically, I told him, I was like, I really want to buy the guitar, but I want to try like three or four of them. So he was able to get me in two of them. He had one in the store. He was able to get me two more. And he was trying to get me a fourth one, but unfortunately, the he wasn't able to. But that's fine. That's not nothing against him. It's, it just happens sometimes at stores. I used to work at, like I said, I used to work at a guitar store. So I know sometimes it's not always the easiest to do. But... Out of the three, the first one I played, just I didn't like how it played. But the other two, both played great. And out of the two, one of them was actually a little bit brighter. And one of them was a little bit little bit darker, but almost darker to the point where it was a little bit muddier. And it wasn't very um, spunky. It didn't have that kind of chime the other one was getting. And I was like, ooh, you know, the, the little bit brighter one, of course, sounded great to my ears. It sounded great. So I said, you know, what? I'm going to take the, the little brighter sounding one. Well, kind of regretted that decision after so many years because what ended up happening was is that the guitar was bright. I tried so many different options. I tried, tried so many different amps and this and that. I could never get that guitar not to sound as bright. I always had it sounding on the brighter side. So... You know, if I went with the darker sounding guitar, there are pickups, there are different tone pots, there's different volume pots that you could do to make the guitar sound brighter. So, p 
plug in the guitar. I'm not saying go with the darker guitar. I'm just saying that plug in the guitar and understand that, you know, if it's a really bright sounding guitar, it might be the guitar. It might not be the pickups. It might not be anything else. It might just be the guitar is sounding bright. So you may want to try a different guitar, even if it's the same exact thing. So, and that brings me to my fifth and final point. No, and this is not, this is a little different, but know that not one guitar is going to do it all. Okay. If you're going to buy a, a Les Paul with, with, you know, with, um, with humbuckers, understand that you may not be able to get that twangy country sound out of it. I'm not saying you can't play country with a Les Paul, but understand that you may not get that twangy country sound out of it. If you're going to get a Telecaster, understand that you might not be able to get that James Hetfield chuggy chuggy or even, you know, um, Iron Maiden type sound out of it. I mean, you, you could really try and there's different ways you could do with amps and pedals and this and that. But just really understand that sometimes the guitar is what the guitar is and that, you know, you could go through many of many of many different guitars trying to chase that tone, you know, be like, oh, you know, I have a Les Paul and I love playing, you know, my social distortion or my, uh, you know, my Ramones type music with it. But when I go to play, you know, when I want to go and play the um, Johnny Cash or or Brad Paisley style, you know, music, I can't get that certain twang out of it that they get. Well, you know, before you go and sell your guitar and try to get a different Les Paul or sell your guitar and try to get, just understand that, you know what, the Les Paul does what it wants to do and it does something really good and that you may need to get a Telecaster on top of the Les Paul. So hopefully this video helps you like, share, subscribe if you want to, uh, if you want to help me out, you know, just tell me what you think. Dislike if you don't like the video. Also, check back next week when I actually go in further in depth in the construction of the video. So, or the further in depth of the construction of the guitar. I'm sorry. It's uh, it's later at night and uh, I just got home from work. So, um, hope everyone has a great week. I will see you back next week with construction. Take care.